All right, guys, I'm back here over at Integrity RV in Mesa, Arizona, and I think I found a pretty rare and interesting and beautiful 2010 Monaco Diplomat. Now, traditionally, a Diplomat is something of an entry-level diesel pusher, and this is a beautiful luxury diesel. Very nice full-body paint job with some uh, pretty inoffensive colors on it, including a fade on it. It does have four slide-outs, but even more surprising than its beauty and quality after 13 years is that this is listed as a 2010 Monaco product. And traditionally, I would say in 2009 is when Monaco had all sorts of problems and Navstar bought them. But look at this. This is a Roadmaster chassis. And that is a Cummins engine under there. And one of the first things I've told you guys to look for on this era of Monaco is the VIN number in previous videos. So this VIN number actually starts with 51Z or Z. And I've always told you guys to look for a 1RF because that'd be a Roadmaster chassis. So this is a weird sort of uh, VIN number for a Roadmaster chassis. So without really knowing the history on this RV, I would assume this is right after Navstar bought Monaco and they had a few chassis laying around and they still use the Roadmaster chassis with the Navstar ownership. So like all of these uh, inspections we do together, before we go inside, we'll go ahead and take a look at the roof. Now it is still Monaco, so we do still want to look at the uh, radius molding right here and make sure it's not loose. And I am noticing that there is some uh, residue of duct tape right there. Uh, the windshield doesn't look like it's popping out, so maybe that problem was fixed. But it will be interesting to see what the uh, windshield looks like on the roof from the front cap area. Whoever owned this previously really had a lot of pride in their motorhome. Because so far, if you would have told me this was a 2018, I wouldn't hesitate to believe you. They have the ladder. I always like to use the ladder to make sure that the ladder's supporting the weight. I'm not seeing any damage. And let's take a look at what we're looking at. We have the fiberglass rear cap. Of course, this is molded, but man, look at that. The paint's not peeling on it. It's a little bit of checking right there. But even the clearance light lenses aren't cracked. This had to have been stored indoors. That's the only thing I can think of. The grip tape has uh, lost its grip. So a little bit of a sealant gap on this body molding right there. Let's see. All right, this is fiberglass. So this is a fiberglass cap. Okay, good. All right, so this is a fiberglass roof. Oh, okay, look at this. I do have some paint peeling right there. So maybe somebody had this repainted. Yeah, I'm gonna guess somebody repainted it because that's... It looks like pretty fresh paint. But I don't know. Maybe this is part that was only exposed. At any rate, the first thing you should notice is this glaring uh, flashing tape. Now this is aluminum tape that has like a tar backing on it as a sticky. Uh, again, this is flashing. Uh, I would probably recommend we go ahead and replace this because this is doing nothing now. It is exposing the seam underneath and you can see it is riveted down to the framing in between. Now this stuff is a pain to take off and clean properly, but you can see the uh, flange seal. Although it's exposed, it is keeping the water from actually getting inside the roof. The flashing just directs water away from that seam right there. If I look over the top here, I'm not seeing an issue there. Even the acrylic fabric, okay, I can see the stitching. Yeah, okay, this, this fabric is, is dead. So this is the problem I talk about sometimes. But that stitching uh, broken right there, this becomes a funnel. So when water runs onto here, it'll actually go to the low point, which is right in there. Eventually, you'll get a big puddle of water that'll overload the side out seal. So that's why we wanna make sure the slide out topper gets replaced. In fact, this slide would be better without having a topper on it than to have this fabric on it. So that's some obvious damage. Well, I can't say it was stepped in towards because they have a bird's nest in it. I do want to grab this and make sure the hardware isn't loose. Doesn't seem to be. And we'll take a look at the roof. I don't see any issues. You guys see any issues there? Make sure we have four good cables on the side. Four good cables on the side. When you retract the room on the inside, you should look inside and make sure that you don't have a missing cable on the inside either. So you should have eight cable ends total. Now it is a gorgeous March day here in Arizona. It's a little bit of wind and a lot of road noise, so I'm trying to speak up for you guys. Uh, if we look over here, we have the exact same problem on this topper. But even though the slide-out topper is bad, we'll go ahead and take a look underneath for any obvious damage. Monaco 
in 2010 might have been having a little bit of labor shortages. But that looks really good. Even the slide out seals look good. And the molding right here still looks good. Now this is a floating roof. You can see it's just it was just uh, riveted down right here. So a little bit of popping, a little bit of flexing isn't too uncommon. This does have a Coleman roof AC. I don't know if it's a heat pump yet or not, but on a diplomat to have three roof ACs, that's pretty impressive. And you can see those two are newer than this one because it has a, a separate louvered vent cover compared to these that are molded into the shroud completely. So you, I would guess those two have been replaced. But at any rate, I do want to just come against there, lean to make sure the AC is not loose. We can see the paint is still peeling on this side too. So maybe it wasn't completely covered its entire lifetime. Taking a look at that molding there, I'm not seeing any gaps. But what I will say is that this roof is bright and white. I'm not seeing any cracking or chipping or even yellowing on it. So somebody did take care of this roof. So this is obviously the bathroom area here. We have a fantastic vent. I will look around for any cracks in the flange there. I'm not seeing any. A little bit of cracking in the sealant there. But this isn't even Dicor sealant. I don't know what sealant they use, but it's a very si rubbery, like silicone sealant. This has held up pretty well. It's chalking a little bit. I'd be some interested to know what kind of uh, sealant they put there, but there are some gaps there. I'd probably recommend resealing that. The skylight, it's going to be hard to see any cracks in it, but I will already re recommend resealing it. I'm not a big fan of using uh, flashing tape as a lap sealant as they did. You can kind of see how it flexes right there too, so this is probably a little loose and that's probably why that screw's sticking out right there. So, yeah, we probably need to get that secured and reseal the skylight too. It wouldn't be a bad idea to take a look at the ceiling underneath on the skylight and make sure there's no water damage inside. We have a Carefree of Colorado power patio awning right there. as the awning rail attached to the radius. And honestly, the ceiling doesn't look too bad. We are gapped a little bit right there, but this is still, this is factory sealant that they're using. It's very rubbery. It's not a die core. Huh, wonder what sealant they were using. But the sewer vent is definitely broken and plastic has deteriorated, so I'd recommend a new one anyways. Well, this pristine looking roof's not looking too bad, to be honest, for being 13 years old. Wait, for being, yeah, 13 years old, 2010. This roof AC is not loose. Uh, ceiling's a little bit gapped right there, but this high quality roof ceiling that they used didn't fail. It's just the factory missed some areas when they put it on, so it's probably fine. That's pretty impressive stuff. Look over here, we are missing a radio antenna mast. It's not an uncommon thing to find, so fiberglass mast is broke off. I have the third AC right there. Again, it's not loose, so that's all good news. We'll follow the patio awning over to this side. Not seeing any problems with that. It is gonna be difficult to see the molding underneath. Now, this seam's not torn down there, but it is separating right here. So this acrylic uh, fabric is long lasting and durable, but the replacement is gonna be black vinyl. And if we just do a black vinyl there, a black vinyl there, and a black vinyl there, this will look weird. So I'm recommending all new slide out toppers, at least the fabrics top of the slide out here a little bit of a tear but I'm not worried about that and you can see the tapes peeling a little bit there from going across the seals but the seals are in really good shape too I mean usually this one's always peeling now before we go any further right there I'll just step back over here we'll go to this side that molding is definitely secured this fabric is definitely torn and needs to be replaced a little bit of uh, tape peeling up there on that flashing there. Just where we're seeing it on all the slide outs. Yeah, but it's a nice corner mat uh, cap they put on all these slide out roofs. 
and it is aluminum so the roofs on these slide outs is metal it's a very high quality roof to have on a slide out a lot of manufacturers still to this day on luxury class a diesel pushers have a rubber roof or a tpo roof on their slide outs which is not something i think is acceptable especially when you have a gel coat fiberglass roof on top the slide out should be gel coat fiberglass roof or at least metal like these are now past here this radio antenna is not broken that might have been cv antenna there's a radio antenna this tv antenna where the bat wing has been broken that's a very common problem to have on those uh, wine guards and the coax surprisingly hasn't fallen apart the boot has torn and it is loose and that'll just take us past the front slide out on the driver's side we're looking good there no gaps on the sealant anywhere even on that looks good i mean you can see this is like some lichen and some moss that was growing on there so this has been a wet area you can even see it on the uh, fabric tube there so whoever kept it it was it seems like it was outside but i assume they did a really good job of keeping it well maintained and taking care of it so that's what i always want to see in an rv this is a I'm really impressed by this diplomat. And just like the rear cap, the front cap uh, flashing tape is tearing. You can kind of see the tar right there. I hate this stuff. It'll, it's difficult to clean off without making a mess. So that we'd have to reseal. It's a little bit of checking again on the front cap. Look over the side here. I'm not seeing the gasket loose on that front cap for the windshield. And even the uh, clearance lights look really good. And this paint's in really good condition too. I don't understand why the front cap and the back cap are in good shape, but the radiuses are peeling. Kind of doesn't make too much sense to me. Because even with the checking there, you can kind of see it was exposed to sunlight. There's even a little bit of checking in the front cap there. But I think you guys, you know what? Once we look at this entry door awning, we're gonna be done. That brings me to one common thing. I do get questions about periodically about Monaco. Three door awnings fit onto an awning rail right here. Uh, they have to go in between the front cap and the sidewall, and so that right where this molding and that seam goes together, a lot of times they'll put a spacer block so that this uh, rail will meet up correctly over here on the front cap. And a lot of times Monaco did not seal this properly. So water would get behind here and make its way using the, the awning rail as a uh, gutter right into the front cap right above the uh the front door there and the sidewall right there which is a very common place for uh monaco's to get water damage right above the uh, entry door so that's usually the number one culprit from that which i have to do is take the awning completely off take the rail off then once all that's out of the way you can go ahead and seal it up properly then put everything back together but I think that was it guys. This is a pretty nice looking 2010 Monaco Diplomat Class A diesel pusher. When I was over in the uh, office over there, I thought for sure <laughs> this Diplomat was a dynasty. That's how good the paint job looked. But even though I did say the roof looks really good and really clean, this is a gel coat fiberglass roof and you do need to wax it, which is pretty evident on the paint and also on my knees right there. You can see the chalking of the paint that came off the gel coat coating on that roof so it is important to wax these still i'm going to get off the roof finish up the inspection on the inside and then i'll bring you guys on a tour of the inside of this rv okay it's a nice coach i think i got everything figured out on this 2010 diplomat from monaco i didn't even notice it at the time maybe somebody else did but it is a Navistar company at this point. So this is a Navstar Monaco on a Roadmaster chassis with a Cummins diesel engine in the back. And I know I always say I'm in a hurry, but I'm in a hurry, so we'll go through this fairly quickly. There are four slide outs on it, and I would almost call this a luxury RV at this point. Now what I find most impressive is that the driver's seats and the passenger seats look like they just came from the factory. They're in wonderful condition. Uh, apparently this is before all the vinyl started falling apart. It does have the automatic four-point hydraulic leveling on it. Now this is a Lippard leveling. And even though the front windshield shades are going to be power, it does have roller shades on the side here for both day and night. Now impressively, not only does it have a smart wheel on it and adjustable armrest on it for a diplomat, it also has, in 2010, 
uh, side cameras on it. So, let's see, select. So there's the rear camera. And yes, that is only 16,000 miles. So this thing's almost still in the wrapper. And of course, uh, even the dash of this plastic made to kind of look like a carbon fiber. Normally they crack at all the screw heads and normally this vinyl comes loose from the dash. And I don't have any signs of that. Even more impressively for a diplomat, all the cabinetry in here, so the doors are solid wood, but the cabinet frames and all the trim is real cherry wood too. So it's all solid hardwood in here. It's not engineered lumber. So they were going for something really nice in 2010 on a diplomat. The flooring from the entry door all the way to the back bedroom is gonna be this a ceramic tile. It does even have the accent inlays on it. And so on this floor plan, Again, a diplomat is not usually something I would expect to find this wraparound uh, lounge seat, dinette. Now the table is going to be solid surface Corian. It does not extend. It does not collapse down into a bed, but it does have the storage drawers located underneath. And now though this looks like leather, this is not real leather, but it does have that nice basket weave to it. But this J lounge right here, it doesn't have a pull out section, but this does jackknife very easily into we'll call it a small twin and again cabinetry is all solid wood but they even have solid wood on the window balances and these are the original uh, pleated day night shades on here the only staining I even saw on one of them is right there and that's it now on this floor plan it does have a forward galley on it so right behind the passenger seat is going to be this refrigerator now this is an RV refrigerator it is Dometic and I always like these refrigerators because they are propane and electric and they have a French door style that gives you equal storage on both refrigerator and freezer side. But more importantly, it was the only RV refrigerator with water and ice in the door. There is a problem with these. The medic discontinued servicing on these almost immediately. Uh, so if they work, that's fantastic. If not, you're going to have a hard time finding parts on it. So currently it is working, but this is as close to residential as I think you can get with an RV refrigerator but I would probably be pulling this one out once it breaks and put a residential one in. Some people do not like having the refrigerator up front. I think it's really nice for when you're driving down the road, you don't have to fight all the way back there to get to the refrigerator and the passenger can get to the uh, refrigerator easily. Other than that, you have a three burner propane stove top uh, and a convection oven microwave above. Again, this is the solid surface Corian countertop that you'll find throughout, which is a very nice upgrade they put on here. Now, even on the backsplash, it does have real ceramic tile and a Corian uh, backsplash. I really think it's impressive that the mini blinds are completely intact and working. These are original. Very impressive. The galley countertop is a true asymmetrical under countertop mounted uh, molded sink. At this point, I think just having one big sink is what everybody would prefer, at least what most people prefer. But it is nice to have at least one big sink and a smaller sink. That way you can have that sink cover on, additional countertop space, but you still have a working sink here. And I know I keep touching base about it, but all this is real wood in here. Even this little nice accent piece on the slide out fascia. All of this is real wood. That crown molding is real wood. It's not uh, sticker wrapped like you'd see on a lot of modern stuff. Now behind the galley, we're going to find this love seat. Now this love seat does turn into a bed. And again, this fabric is completely intact. It looks brand new. It even smells brand new in here. But it has a hide-a-bed air mattress on it. I think the pump was located right there. Just fill it up and you have a fairly comfortable, I don't know if I'd call this a queen, it might be a full size bed, but really nice still to have that option there. So, but that extended, this is not gonna be a very useful bed. I think you could still do it, but you're not gonna have a real aisle way right there. You'll be uh, stepping over people sometime at night trying to get to the bathroom, the galley in the morning. Now, I do like how they have the entertainment center right here set up. It's already been set up for a flat screen TV. And this is the original Sharp that it came with. And it has a uh, sound bar underneath that was custom made when it was built too. But with that already set up, you can change this out to a bigger modern TV if you want to. But it looks like a nice piece of furniture in this RV. And gives this floor plan a very residential feel. You get that feel again also because you get a side hallway walkway right here. So there's even... Windows in your hallway. 
So you get a full-size bathroom that's all-inclusive. You don't have the toilet and shower and vanity in separate areas. So it's all one bathroom. Now this one right here, this is a, a porcelain gravity toilet. So no macerating toilet you have to worry about. You'll get the same uh, Corian countertop right here with, with an integrated sink and the matching backsplash in here. It still has the mirrored medicine cabinet above. And before we go in the shower, check this out. 2010, there's a Whirlpool washer with a standalone dryer. So you have a true washer and dryer, which is a lot more useful than a uh, combination washer dryer down below. Now, while there's a Neo Angle skylight above, I wouldn't really call this a Neo Angle shower. Uh, it's a radius corner shower. It is a seamless fiberglass shower stall. It has a built-in bench seat. And uh, again, there's no seam right here where the door meets the shower pan or the walls meet the shower pan. That is about a eight inch step up from the floor into the shower. These uh, radius shower doors, I haven't really had any real problems with those. So I'm six foot, I can step in just fine. I didn't have to duck under here. Uh, let's see, if I go to step out. Yeah, I'll have to step out first and then down. I will say it's a little bit tight. I think this is about 43 feet long. Uh, so you're not gonna get two people in here very easily. It's just gonna be one person in the shower. And again, why put a bench seat if you're gonna put the faucet right there where you can't sit down. I don't know why designers are like this. It's been nice right about there. But otherwise, really nice shower. But this is a solid real wood door too. Now you do have a bedroom pocket door right here. Again, it is a solid door. It is on a slider. And we'll go back to the last two slide outs here. We'll find a king size bed. Now this is a sleep number king size bed and it does work. It's still storage underneath. And it even has a central vacuum cleaner located in the bed. But one thing that might be a little bit hard for you guys to experience through video is that it smells like a new house in here. Like this carpet, I can smell. It still smells like new carpet. Uh, speaking of carpet, we did go from tile uh, to carpet in the bedroom. I do like having carpet in the bedroom unless you have heated tile flooring. You have the drawers built into this slide out room. So that's the cable driven slide out that we saw from above. And the flat screen TV is built into it. And unsurprisingly, it still has the original DVD player in there. Now one of the last great features right here is gonna be this massive closet space. Hello, you have two oversized mirrored sliding closet doors there. So it's a very good sized closet back here. So it goes from one side to the other. This box right here is just where the water heater is housed. And I think the previous owner went ahead and put some uh, rubber made shelving right in here. But you can even see the uh, coach information right in here. There it was guys. I was able to take you on a walkthrough on this, what I would call a pretty rare 2010 Monaco Diplomat. Now this is from Navstar owned Monaco, but it is on a Roadmaster chassis. But more impressively, this looks almost showroom ready. Like uh, they bought it and put it in a barn. I mean, I know it's seen some action because we see the, uh, the paint peeling on the roof when we did the inspection, but this is really nice. Somebody really took some care of this. I don't even know that they used it that much with 16,000 miles on it and almost no real wear inside here. But it is a shame that Navstar couldn't uh, make Monaco work out for them because the crew there at the factory made a really nice diplomat here. It, even, it really looks nice. I thought for sure it was the Dynasty. However, all that being said, it does not have a side discharge radiator and it does have a solid front axle. And these are not disc brakes in the front. These are drum brakes. I don't know if you guys can see right there, the drum brakes. So there are a few things on here that I would like to have seen different. But more importantly, if you are ever gonna be looking at a 2009 to 2013 Monaco product, do try to stay away from the Navstar Monacos that are built on their Max Force chassis with their uh, Max Force engine. It's a, I think it's an international engine. They did have a lot of issues with the exhaust method they use for managing emissions on them. And more importantly, they had a lot of Navstar proprietary Max Force modules to control the functions on the dash. And the chassis area right here, this is not Max Force. This is still a pretty easy to service chassis distribution center right here. When Monaco still was making these on the Roadmaster chassis.
But thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I don't know if I covered everything I needed to cover on there, but it was a little windy. But I really was impressed by those two. But I really was impressed by this 2010 Monaco Diplomat. They built this one really well, and it was well maintained. I also want to thank the guys over here at Integrity RV. They've been good friends with me for a long time. Let me show you guys this coach. But please trust me on that Navstar Max Force chassis. It's probably not the best thing to get into if you're just looking for an RV. Bye. Pretty quickly. But my phone's dying, so I have to charge it up. And these uh, shower doors, we... And these shower door, and I know I said to be fast. Residential style. It's residential feel and quality. And you know what? It's got a lot of heft to it too. Now, one of the last great features here is gonna be the side, <laughs> those engines uh, with uh, the method they use for uh, 